Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. A paranormal hunter born as a demon must fight against bizarre creatures from the underworld to free humanity from darkness. Today we will recap the story of the movie, Hellboy, from 2019. In 517 BC, there was a war between men and dark creatures in Great Britain. The great witch Vivian Nemu, also known as the Blood Queen, spread a plague over mankind because of the war, but King Arthur and the wizard Merlin went after her to defeat her. King Arthur killed her with Excalibur, his legendary weapon cutting the witch to pieces. After that, to ensure the safety of all mankind, he locked each part in a box sealed with the heart of a saint and with a seal that could only be broken by a religious person, and hid each one in different places. Many years later, in the present day, we see Hellboy, a paranormal investigator. He talks to his father about Ruiz, his friend who has been sent to investigate a vampire lair and hasn't heard from him in three weeks. Eventually, Hellboy finds Ruiz in the place where he was supposed to be investigating, and he seems very well. Hellboy asks them to leave, but Ruiz invites him to a fight, and our protagonist accepts. As he enters the ring, his friend says that he was training to kill him. Despite this, Hellboy doesn't have much trouble deflecting the first strike and catches him in the process. Ruiz knocks him down with a well-placed knee to the head, but Hellboy gets up anyway, only to be knocked down again. When Hellboy manages to grab his friend's arm, claws appear in his hands. What have they done to you? Hellboy asks, but Ruiz just shows the fangs that have also appeared out of nowhere and attacks again. That being the case, Hellboy understands that he has no choice but to fight for real. He manages to remove his friend's mask, only to see a monstrous face. Ruiz soon transforms completely into a large, unstoppable humanoid bat, a vampire. The monster advances against Hellboy, who slaps it away to deflect the attack, and accidentally impales it on one of the ring's corners. He reaches out to help his friend, but it is too late. Saddened by his loss, he goes away to drink. His father sends two people to bring Hellboy back, and, a little begrudgingly, he obeys. They go to Colorado, to the Paranormal Research and Advocacy Agency, BPRD. There, he meets his father, who helps him trim the horns from his forehead while saying that he understands his sadness over Ruiz's death, but that they were evils of working for the agency. Finally, his father tells him why he wanted him to come back, he wanted Hellboy's help to solve a problem with giants at the Osiris Club, an ancient British occult society. In parallel to this, a mysterious voice says that he has suffered much at the hands of Hellboy, that his existence has become nothing and so he only lives to kill Hellboy. Still without seeing faces, a woman says that she sympathizes and can help. She suggests to the spiteful Hellboy that he find Vivian Nemu, the immortal witch in pieces, and restore her so that she can help him. Only then do we see the woman's face, too old to be alive, Hellboy arrives at the Osiris Club to begin his mission. The owner and the members show him the problem. The club is even used to dealing with giants in England, they can handle even two of these creatures very well, but three giants are threatening the country again, and it will take Hellboy's help to get around the situation. While he is still getting all the instructions, the house clairvoyant, Elizabeth, appears. She hints that Hellboy might destroy the world, which seems to leave the protagonist confused, but she keeps talking anyway. Elizabeth says that she witnessed the moment when Hellboy was born, near the end of the Second World War. The Germans had one last card up their sleeve, a necromancer who was summoned to perform an ancient ritual that might change the course of the war, but of course it didn't work, and the Nazis were attacked next. The clairvoyant says that she and the club members were there that night to stop any supernatural abominations that would arise. In the event, Hellboy appeared, and his father, who was there that night, rescued him instead of killing him. By his creation, Hellboy was transformed into someone good. The mysterious man searching for his revenge has broken into the church where the witch's remains were kept. He orders a monk to say the words that break the spell, after all, do you remember that only a man of God could break the seal? The threat works and one of the monks breaks the spell. The monster opens the box and welcomes the witch, and then we are back to following the path of Hellboy. In the giant's mission the hunting party goes out accompanied by Hellboy, all armed with special spears and mounted on horses. They soon find remains of bodies that indicate a trail where the giants passed, and the search continues beyond a river, where they decide to prepare to attack, near the bridge. Meanwhile, they begin to attack Hellboy, using the spears against him, and even though he tries to defend himself, the first blow was right in the chest, so the counterattacks are slow and imprecise, but he still struggles to escape. The hunters manage to stick several electric spears into Hellboy, and as the leader controls the shocks with a remote control, he says that they would never need the devil's help to capture something they had been used to killing for centuries, and that they would never let the devil take over England, because that would start the apocalypse. The one who gave the order to kill him was Elizabeth, 
who had a vision showing that this should be done. Just as the leader is about to kill Hellboy, something attacks him and rips his head off. When Hellboy manages to get up and out of the river where he was left, he sees that two giants were devouring the entire hunting party. A third appears to attack him with his huge sword. The monster tries to hit Hellboy, who rolls away and manages to shoot a large piece of wood into his eye. Another giant appears in, trying to help his friend, ends up killing him, but there are still two more to go. Hellboy rips one giant's eye out and manages to get him to swallow a large tree trunk that goes through his skull, and when the last one alive comes in for the attack, Hellboy spins his weapon and manages to cut off the creature's arm and hit it in the big head, it was done. The hooded beast falls exhausted to the ground, completely unresponsive, until another group shows up to search for him, if they really are allies and no longer traitors. He wakes up in a comfortable room, his wounds clean and treated, thanks to a woman he rescued as a child and now returns the favor. Her name is Alice and she talks to the dead, which is why she was able to find Hellboy in time. After a brief home invasion, Hellboy's father finds him therein, despite his son's angry questioning about the trap and everything that happened, he asks for Hellboy's help once again. They are reassembling the Blood Queen, one of her pieces is at the Osiris Club and any help to stop this disaster will be welcome. Hellboy doesn't seem to have much choice but to help, but insists that Alice go along, claiming that she is the only person he trusts, and so they all get in the car. With the help of Alice, who can hear the screams of the dead, they find a place with several dead people, including the clairvoyant. Alice contacts her, and Elizabeth's spirit tells them what they already know about Vivian's return, and brings more questions about Hellboy by saying that his fate will be revealed when the witch is complete again. But there wasn't much time to think about that, as the humanoid villain shows up at this point to confront him, and asks for help from Nimu, the witch. Although she has only talked about revenge up to this point, she shows compassion and empathy for Hellboy, saying that she understands what it's like to be feared and called a monster, and promises that they could remake the world together. Hellboy is shaken by her words and lets her get away with it. The mission commander, M11, who is a friend of his father's and was assigned this task, is angered by this failure. As Hellboy leaves, M11 injects something into his thigh, but we still don't know what it is. M11 finds it strange that Hellboy is hesitant with the witch in that situation. When the situation seems more under control, Hellboy finally tells us what this boar-faced monster is, Gruagich, a monster that steals human babies and leaves one of them in place to pretend to be human, no one quite knows why. This happened to Alice, who was switched with a Gruagich as a baby. Hellboy manages to threaten the Gruagich into returning Alice, and everything works out in the end. While the witch is reassembled elsewhere, the boar-headed monster says that he hates Hellboy because he burned him with iron and shamed him, taking away from him the possibility of becoming a person in Alice's place. The parts of Nimu are sewn together, and finally the witch says that there is still one task left to be done. Meanwhile, Hellboy continues his mission. He goes to a headquarters with Alice, where he finds his father studying about Nimu, but does not seem enthusiastic about burying her again. He even suggests that if humans weren't trying to kill witches and demons all the time, maybe these dark beings wouldn't try to kill humans as well, but his father doesn't agree. Still, Hellboy insists that there should be another answer besides annihilation, where monsters, his brothers and sisters, in his words, would not have to hide. M11 went away in the meantime, took a special weapon blessed by the Pope himself and made of holy materials, to kill Hellboy. According to the commander, the beast inside our protagonist could not be ignored anyway. Of course Hellboy leaves in anger after fighting with his father, but as he takes the elevator, he is taken to a new place with a walking house, where he meets Baba Yaga, the woman who convinced the humanoid boar to reassemble Nimu. She was a witch in the past and Hellboy left her there, but there is no initial friction between them. After a dinner that doesn't go very well, Hellboy makes a deal to find out where Nimu is, so the old witch tells him that he can find Nimu at the place where she was killed, in Pendle Hill, where she left her blood on a tree. The witch needs all the parts of her body to regain her power, and must go there to get the missing parts, but Hellboy only has until midnight. He returns to the normal world, to the room where his father was studying about Nimu, and goes over the information he has just received. Hellboy, Alice, and M11 travel to the hill to prevent the witch's return, but Nimu is already there, gathering her blood. The team lands a little way from the tree, and soon they are attacked by beings coming out of the earth. Hellboy wants to help, but M11 and Alice ask him to go first to stop the blood witch, and so he does. As he goes to Nimu, several dark beings gather on the hill to greet the queen who has reappeared after 1500 years. Hellboy is having a hard time with the queen of blood. She still wants his inner demon to wake up, and he is willing to defeat her now, but he realizes it won't be easy at all. When Alice shows up to help, Nimu throws a single thorn from her crown at her, 
promising that she will kill everything Hellboy loves until he becomes a monster. At that moment, Hellboy is so concerned about Alice that he doesn't care about these details. A witch, from the time when Nemu was cut down by King Arthur, was there to ask the Blood Witch for mercy for her treachery, but was denied. As such, she tells Hellboy that the only way to save Alice from Nemu's power is to go to where the wizard Merlin is buried. Hellboy follows the instructions and finds the wizard, so old and faded that he looks like a mummy, but surprisingly manages to heal Alice anyway, demanding only that Hellboy promise to destroy Nemu at any cost. The demon accepts without a second thought, so Merlin fulfills his part of the bargain and, after stunning the human visitors, tells Hellboy the truth that will change everything from here on out. He is the last descendant of King Arthur. One of the descendants married a demon and left a son in hell, and this son was none other than our protagonist. However, what shakes Hellboy the most is to discover that he is descended from a mere human, as if he now has a real reason to defend men. With his last breath, Merlin brings King Arthur's sword back for Hellboy to take and use to defeat the witch, he has visions of himself as a true incendiary demon. He releases the blade and lets the sword go back to Arthur. After that we see the arrival of the Nemu in British cities. She starts spreading her plague, apparently the same one she used to kill people 1500 years earlier, and then a newspaper announces that the British government has already declared a state of emergency and recorded 100,000 contaminations in the last two hours, with a high chance that the plague will become an epidemic. It takes little time for the Queen of Blood to find the BPRD and destroy the headquarters, and when Hellboy receives this information, still in Merlin's cave, he worries for his father and returns as fast as he can. There are many dead people there, but Alice stands by Hellboy and assures him that at least his father is not dead, or she would have felt it. The search for his father leads him to an enclosed place where he finds the vengeful Gruagich, with no sign of the Blood Witch. They begin to fight, and to Hellboy's surprise, this time he fails to burn the humanoid boar with iron, as he did when he was pretending to be baby Alice. In the meantime, because of their battle, pieces of ceiling come off and Commander M11 ends up with his legs trapped under a large piece of pilaster. Alice tries to stay away from the monster fight while looking for a way to help the commander, not realizing that he is getting weird and shaky from the lack of injections. Finally, the commander transforms into a kind of large and powerful feline. At first we might even think that it is a monster without a conscience that will attack everyone without exception, but he leaves Alice alone and goes to help Hellboy in his fight. Our protagonist has been pierced by the pig horns, and even with M11's help, there is little they can do. The Gruagich had no trouble throwing the feline aside and getting him out of the fight, and was almost crushing Hellboy when the witch appeared again. Nemu tells her servant to leave Hellboy alone, and when the boar reminds her of the agreement that said he had the right to kill Hellboy for helping her so far, the Blood Witch says she only promised to make him powerful, and he was for a while, so she kills him despite his complaints. Our protagonist is still alive, but badly injured. Nemu insists once again that Hellboy ally himself with her, and when he is denied, she throws him to the ground with such force that she sends him underground, where surprisingly there is the skeleton of King Arthur and the Excalibur. Nemu challenges Hellboy to take the sword to kill her at once, but he still fears he will become the destroyer of the world if he does so and resists the temptation. The Blood Witch still doesn't give up, summons Hellboy's father and kills him in front of him to provoke him, and finally gets what she wants. The hero takes the sword from the stone, his rightful inheritance, and just as in his visions, it becomes a flaming weapon in his hands, its horns growing like those of a real demon. For the first time, Nemu seems afraid and gently asks Hellboy to stay with her. It is as if hell opens up beneath her feet, and monsters begin to rise from the ground in other places in the city, killing more people, destroying bridges. The Blood Witch kneels in front of him, calling him Sir and saying that Hellboy now has the potential to recreate the world with this sword. Meanwhile, M11, hidden and human again, takes the gun with the special ammunition and prepares the shot. Our protagonist extends his hand to Nemu as if accepting her invitation, and she stands up happily for a moment, but only until Alice can reach his father's dead body unnoticed and make contact with his spirit. At this point, the soul of Hellboy's father asks his son to think carefully about what he is doing, claiming that he is better than this and is just being used. The witch insists that Hellboy was made for this moment and must embrace his destiny. His father reminds him that it is he himself who must define his destiny, despite what Nemu says about him being a beast of the apocalypse. Now the demon has an important choice before him. For a moment, it looks like Hellboy bought the witch's idea, but he soon slashes the damned thing with his flaming sword, screaming with hatred. Then he drives the sword into the ground and all the dark beings begin to be sucked back into the hell that has opened up. He breaks his horns with his bare hands and then throws Nemu's head into the hellfire as well, before the ground closes in. M11, 
who was up to that moment watching to see if he should shoot or not, puts the gun away. Hellboy turns to his father's spirit and accuses him of already knowing all along about this bestial side of him and his fate. His father says that they both already knew, but that he has no regrets about not killing him the night he found him, and that our protagonist is now humanity's only hope. He assures him that he was the best father he could and that he loves his son, and leaves despite Hellboy's pleas. Six months later, in Siberia, even Alice is actively helping in the missions, taking down enemies with a special English punch, weapons and incredible kicks. Even the commander joins the mission, and in beast form, the three of them function as a great group against the dark beings. Alice finds some sort of capsule with a mysterious inscription, and inside is some monstrous being that could eventually be of great importance to the BPRD agency. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.